Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dave, and if you're returning, well, my name's still Dave. If you can't tell, take a guess where I'm at, but if you can't tell, I am in the bee yard today. So it's the afternoon, late afternoon. I just got off work a little while ago, and we have a beehive that I talked about several weeks ago. We were going to take you guys along each time we checked the hive and each time that we uh, did something with it or manipulated it. So it's definitely time to do that. To recap, we uh, put a package in several weeks ago, checked on it to make sure the queen was okay after several days, and we have not touched it since. Uh, truthfully, this time of year in the spring when a lot of activity is happening, I probably should have checked it a week ago. But, you know, it is what it is. Time gets away from you. Time is a valuable commodity. And uh, not one that I always have a lot of. So... Without any further ado and wasting your time, let's check this beehive out. All right, I'm back. So, as I said, this, this hive has not been opened since I opened it last time on camera here. But... I will tell you I've cheated, I guess, maybe a little bit. Sorry, I've cheated maybe a little bit because I have opened all my other hives. This is the last one. Uh, we got a little bit of weeds here. Get rid of them. Sort of a little highway for ants to get up in the colony if you don't take care of those. I'm here you just can't see my face so I've opened all my other hives so I have a good idea what I'm what I'm gonna walk into here I'm suspecting this hive is gonna be chock full it's going to have a lot of bees in it possibly a lot of queen maybe queen cells which are cells that uh, indicate that a swarm is coming that they're making a new queen for a swarm I don't think they've swarmed yet um, but we do need to get into them, find a queen, make sure she's still doing well, or at least find some eggs, specifically eggs that have been laid recently. And uh, we're gonna add a uh, we're gonna add a second story to this condo. So here we go. All right. We have the outer cover there, and we talked about this last time. And here's the inner cover. It is basically there to help keep that outer cover get gummed down and sealed forever from where the bees make propolis. Now this right here is uh, kind of what's left of a pollen patty. I threw it in there in the beginning. Bees need pollen. For their brood I was concerned there might not be enough and so you can give feed them that's an artificial it's basically like a cake of pollen and it's kind of a very gooey kind of consistency and uh, when it gets warm like this it just kind of gets gross so they've worked on it but they haven't eaten at all and that's a good sign that they're probably getting pollen from elsewhere and that they're Hey, that there is enough pollen in the area, which according to any weather reports around here and the air quality index, there's plenty of pollen going on right now. They're very sedate and uh, I only hit them with a little bit of smoke and I'm not even sure I had to do that. So we're going to dive in here. We're going to look for a queen. But uh, I think by the judging by the amount of bees, so when I put these in here, when I put these in here, originally, there was enough bees that they covered about three of these frames. There's 10 frames in here. As you can see, they're now covering all 10 frames. So in about 12 to 14 days, they, the, this hive has tripled in size. Eh, no, I guess it's been longer than that, about three weeks which is about the time that it takes 
from hatching to to uh, full to to growth or from laying the egg to, to hatching excuse me so we got lots of bees I'm gonna pull this first frame out um, the first frame you can really sometimes hurt the bees you got to be careful um, if they're wedged in here and when you pull the first frame out see it has a tendency to kind of can sometimes roll them and they get upset I'm willing to bet either you or I would get upset as well so we try not to upset them everything's smooth movements try to do things that will uh, not get them riled not get them upset and we're gonna look for the Queen and hopefully I can find her and show her to you so this first frame that brown right in the middle you can see has got brood on it so she's been laying eggs like crazy we may have picked a really good frame or excuse me a really good hive to follow along with because these bees look super strong we can see on the opposite side more more uh, plenty more brood so she's got a nice patch of brood on both sides the white around the edges is uh resources that's honey they've packed a little packed a little around the edges of the hive this one if we look you can see there's not the white capped honey but they've actually filled it with nectar i don't know if you can see that hopefully you can it looks glisteny um that is nectar that's been brought in but has not yet been fully cured and dried and so the bees have not sealed it up yet so we're going to take another let's get another um let's get another one here pull it out uh I'm looking for a couple things i'm looking for the looking for the queen of course always uh that's the perpetual beekeeper is looking for the queen oh now this one looks like they built a lot of bunch of comb on the bottom sometimes they'll use that to build what's called a queen cup which basically is a replace a cell that grows a replacement queen but other times these bigger cell they're a little bit bigger if you can see those hanging off the bottom and those are for the male drones now this, this uh, frame, I don't see any, uh, I don't see a queen on it either. However, you see it still has brood kind of around the edges. That middle part, I'm guessing, was probably full of brood less than several days ago that is hatched out. It hasn't had anything else put in it. It hasn't had any nectar put in it. The queen hasn't come back and laid any eggs, it doesn't look like uh but that looks like that was probably a frame full of brood in the very recent past so again we're going to set that down as well and still no queen but oh my goodness look at this she has been busy okay i'm pulling this next frame out and I'm going to show you why this queen, why the, I know this queen's been busy. I want to see, first of all, if she's on it. Let's make sure of that. I don't want to go through a whole bunch of gyrations if she's on the frame. She has been marked with a red mark on her head. The, uh, the breeder does that. And, uh. The marks, the marks are to uh, let you know what year that queen was, but they do also help her stand out. So this year is a red mark. There's other colors. There's red, yellow, white, and each one corresponds to a year. But years ending in three have a red mark. Now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with this frame and why she's been busy. That is all brood. And that has all been laid in the last several weeks. So we're looking at 
a complete frame of brood. And then when we turn it over, those are all eggs and they will all hatch out. Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing probably in the next week or so. So as you can see with that, and you saw that all frames were, all 10 frames were already full of bees. They're going to be overwhelmed here shortly and they need some space. So that's what we're here to do. We're going to give them some space and this queen is doing great. I'm so excited with this hive. And with, to be able to, that this is the one that we decided to share because so far so good. And uh, it's always exciting this time of year. The bees go crazy. They're, they're uh, laying eggs. They're gathering uh, nectar. And everything is just going like gangbusters. So very exciting to see. If you think you want to be into bees, they are a lot of work. But they're also a heck of a lot of fun. And by a lot of work, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that, but they are, they're a weekly task and uh, uh, several hours, maybe an hour or two, depending on how many hives you have. And then there's certain times a year when you're net, when you're extracting honey and in the spring when you're just getting them going and they're ramping up, they do take some more time, but, but uh, it's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming at all. And they are a lot of enjoyment. I mean, assuming you like bees. If you don't like bees, then there's nothing you're going to find enjoyable about this. So, except maybe the honey afterwards. In which case, just buy your honey from a local beekeeper and, and avoid the stress on yourself. All right. So, I've got you down here close. This is the frame I just showed you, this black one here that uh, was covered in, um, covered in brood waiting to hatch and then we're going to go to this next frame here and I'm not sure I'm going to dig through this whole thing digging through when you ha think you have a concern for example whether your queen's laying or whether you might have uh, some sort of diseases or foul brood or a in heavy infestation of varroa that's important to do right now these bees are going like crazy. There's another frame. See the see the brood right around the bottom there? And then the brood around the edge. So that was completely full like that last frame I showed you. But they've already hatched out all except around those edges. The middle part, no honey, no nectar, no pollen, no brood. So a little bit, a little bit of, uh, I'm sorry, they're backfilling it with a little bit of nectar. Uh, not sure if you can see the glistening. I think you can. So that's nectar they're bringing in after after the uh, after the, um, the the batch of brood uh, hatched out. So those bees, when they hatch out, they can't fly. They will. Um, they will stay on the frames and they actually are nurse bees to begin with, I believe. Yes. And then after uh, a period of time, a week or two, whoa, hey, whoa. Okay, just got stung there right through two vinyl gloves. Sorry about that. Um, here's another one. Lots of, lots of, uh, lots and lots of uh, brood. So I'm not going to pursue continuing to dig through this um, dig through this uh, let's break the stinger out there we go um, I'm not going to continue to pursue digging through this they're starting to get a little agitated and there's really no need for it there is nothing nothing that's an issue here so we're going to put this back together and I'm going to put another box on top of it. You can see they're starting to get wound up now. I do try not to smoke them any more than I have to, but they're starting to really get on me. When 
when a bee stings you, it actually releases pheromones. That pheromones, those pheromones will excite the other bees. So what I'm doing here, they stung me on the finger there, the ring finger. She stung me on the ring finger, so I'm going to give that hand a blast of smoke. That helps block those pheromones. Let's go ahead and smoke the bees. Uh, like I said, I don't like to do it. I like to do it as little as possible. However, sometimes it needs it. And then we're going to shoot these right back in here together. Okay. Come on, girls. Work with me just for a minute more and I'll have you back together. Okay, so we need to push these frames over because we've got one more to go in here. They do fit snugly. Now, this frame is full of bees. I can try to slide it in there, but it's the last frame, which means it's going to be tight. What I'd rather do, and what I'm going to do, is we're going to shake those bees off. Now there's hardly any bees on the frame, and we can slide this in here much easier. Because sliding that in there with all those bees on there will roll the bees between the frames and crush them. Shaking it off like that, you may injure a few, but overall it's going to be a much better outcome. Now, oh, my finger's really starting to thrive. Good job, girls. Um, now. The next thing we're going to do that we have here is a device called a queen excluder. You can see it's just a sheet of uh, like a heavy duty screen. It's so it's it's wire. And what we do, what I do, what I'm going to do, what I have done. There we go is we put that over the top. Now those little grates, those little grooves, are wide enough that a, a bee can slip through, but not so wide that the queen with her larger abdomen can slip through. What does that do? I'm gonna show you one second. Okay, now we just set another box on top. This will be a box that eventually gets filled with honey. Let me move you around for a second and I'll show you. Okay, now this is a honey super. It's not as deep as the first box. You saw how the frames in the first box, these frames much shorter, much smaller. Um, the first two years, that I did this, I used mostly what are those deep boxes. They get very heavy. Um, I realized that fairly quickly. And so I switched over this year. Well, no, I actually take that back. I did that the first year. Last year I started switching over to using more of these shallow boxes for the honey. A, uh, one of those deep boxes, that first one that the, they're in, one of those boxes can weigh 80 plus pounds when it's full of sugar. Which means if you have two or three of those stacked one on top of the other, they're going to be stacked five, six feet in the air because the frames are sitting on a stand and you have to pick up 70, 80, 90 pounds, even if it's a really good hive, over 100 pounds and you're picking it up five feet in the air five and a half feet in the air I learned that quickly that that's not something I really want to be doing so I switched over to these uh, last year not that I didn't have some but I switched over largely to these in order to alleviate that these are called mediums and these mediums uh, are gonna run you full of full of um excuse me full of um of uh, honey, these will run you, yeah, you know, man, 35 pounds or so. Still heavy, not, you know, unmanageable though. 
So a couple of these, you can see that I got to scrape that off because it's they're not kind of kind of not sitting right in the in the frame or in the hive. Scrape those off. Now, these are leftover frames that I had from last year. I've already extracted honey from it. You can see the cells are, it's got drawn out comb, but the comb is all broken over. The bees will take that wax, they'll reuse it, they'll repurpose it, they'll get their, get their stuff in order. And as they come up through that queen excluder, they will begin working on this for honey. This frame does have one one frame in it that this thing is see how thick that it sticks out that sucker is packed full of honey and it's from last year we're going to give it back i'm a big believer in giving them back part of their honey or leaving it on of course during the winter um, we can always feed them with syrup we can always manipulate them in that way but i do believe that um, quite personally on a personal level they made the honey and they certainly deserve part of it so you can call that a weird spiritual thing or whatever but it is what it is so because this one sticks out so much and it's so fat I've actually only got one two three six seven eight I've only got nine frames in here over the next week or so they will work that frame down and we'll add another we'll squeeze another frame in if not, we'll just have nine in this box. It's not a big deal. It just means that they draw the, from the sides of the frame, they draw the comb out deep, thicker. And it'll be, uh, it'll, there'll be more honey. So we're going to space those out nice and evenly. The bees now have um, an extra box in order to make honey and to store honey which will free up space in the bottom box for the queen. Oh, and I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure I said this. That queen excluder, that queen can't fit through there. And I said that, but I didn't say why. So the reason for that is that will keep her down in that bottom box. And in doing so, it'll keep all of her brood and the, and the eggs down the bottom box, which means when I come back later to, to collect the honey, these top boxes, and I'll stack, I'm sure as way this hive's going, I'm gonna be stacking more, more, um, more of these small boxes on top. That as I stack them up, the queen can't get up here. She can't lay eggs in it. Laying eggs in it can mess up the honey. It can create issues because you've got, a, you've got some frames that are full of honey and then they got some brood in them and it makes it difficult to extract as well as you, you want the honey to be, you want the boxes with the honey to be honey. So that's what we're doing. I have not used a queen excluder before. I didn't use them the first or the second year, and I had problems both years. I've heard a lot of bad things about queen excluders, and I've heard other people say that's all hogwash, that, that queen excluders are, are fantastic. Some of the knocks against queen excluders, number one, is that by confining the uh, queen to just one box or even two boxes, you are confining the amount of space she can lay eggs in, which makes her feel cramped and promotes that the, the hive may swarm. The other thing is that I've heard is that the, the worker bees do not travel through the grate well, so therefore they will not create honey well if you have the um, queen excluder on. And I've heard, and, and to be absolutely fair, if I thought those things were the case, I wouldn't use them. But I've heard a lot of beekeepers, especially on YouTube, that as well as read in books and seen in person, who say that's hogwash. Those those are simply not true. Those things don't happen. And that um, that if you have a hive that's just not producing well, it's not because you did or didn't put a queen excluder on it. It's probably because the hive just isn't producing well for some other, uh, either the queen's not doing well or for some external reason, such as weather or uh, forage ability or forage the availability of forage plants. So I went in all of, I went all in this year. I know that not having a queen excluder is a pain. It makes it very difficult during honey extraction. And so I'm, I'm giving it a shot and we'll, we'll have to see together. So I put it on, the bees are all set. 
there's really nothing else more to see here. Um, there's the new frames. Those will ideally, the bees will collect mm -hmm. any leftover remaining honey that might be in there. They'll use it. They'll reprocess it. As well as there's a this full cake of honey here that they have that they can use for resources. They can pass through the screen. They'll move the resources back and forth however they need to. And I will probably, it's not going to be today, but probably when I put another, another box on here, which may be as soon as a week or two from now, we will uh, put an, what's called an upper entrance on here also, and I'll show you what we do with that. So, I think we're about done for today. I'm going to close up. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm, uh, I got bees all around me, so I'm going to sign off. And I hope that uh, you have a good weekend. It's coming up on uh, Memorial Day weekend. I don't know whether this video will get out before Memorial Day weekend. So we'll put it as I hope you do have a great weekend. Enjoy it. Remember what Memorial Day is about. But take time and spend time with your family, friends. Enjoy it. Stay safe. Stay prepared. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.